the first slide looks like it's blur blurrier than I expected. Sorry about that. Um, this is this is um, shows three different samples, three different examples of ways to stick up for yourself. I will teach this one to older kids. This is this this is appropriate for middle schoolers and high schoolers because it's a little more language involved and there's a little more complicated of an image. Passive, assertive, and aggressive. If you are on the left, if you're passive, you make yourself invisible. So what does that look like? You see the cartoon, one per person who's very solid and very present says, I want, but you are practically invisible. If you see there's a person who's in a dotted line, don't even see their words. If you don't stick up for yourself, you're passive, and you make yourself invisible. Nobody knows what you want. Therefore, you don't get your needs met and you might feel frustrated. That could, that could trigger your frustration. I never get my way. Nobody ever listens to me. Right? So that's one possible uh, uh, approach to sticking up for yourself. Right? Let's go to the far right extreme, aggressive. If you're aggressive, you're the very solid person there and you're holding that cartoon mallet and you're bopping the other person on the head saying, my belief, what I want, right? So you're being too strong about it. You're really kind of, you know, violating their space. You squash them and make them invisible. So if you come off too aggressive, you chew up other people and you make them invisible. So therefore, if you're either at either extreme of passive or aggressive, somebody's invisible, aren't they? Right? And you're mad, right? So that's not working for you. So let's move to the middle. Right? The middle column is assertive. This is healthy sticking up for yourself. And so the person on the left says, I want blank. That person's present. You are standing there and you think in the thought bubble, I respect your opinion, but I see it differently. And your word bubble says, I hear you and I want blank, right? So you're there. I want. You respect the other person. You're not chewing them up. And you're there and you know what you want and you're both saying it with I, with an I statement. I'm gonna talk about I statements in the next slide, right? And that begins, if you're there and they're there, all of a sudden, you can then begin compromising. That begins problem solving, right? But if you're passive or aggressive, someone's invisible and one or more people are angry. Right? So if a great way to end any one of these little guidance lessons if you're talking to someone is to ask the child to evaluate it. Which one of these seems like it's the most effective way to live? Which person seems like they'd be the most consistently happy? So you can ask those questions. Those are great thought questions for kids after you tell a story and present it. And then kids always choose the middle one, plus it's highlighted in yellow, so that's a little bit of a clue. Um, and so here's the actual skill. This boils down to I statements that most people have been taught in guidance or in um, social emotional learning, SEL, at school. Uh, but we have a little bit of a different spin on it. I want to language it for you, tell, tell you the story. We call it your power of I. Okay? Your power of I is, uh, begins helping the young person see that they have vast power within, but it's not physical power. You don't have to yell and scream. You don't have to hit to have power. And if you take your finger, take your index finger and point to yourself, point to your chest, right? Me, point to yourself and point in your chest. That's your core right in here. This is where your spirit is. Um, and this is your powerhouse. This is where your heart is. So here's your personal power. You point to yourself. And when you say, I, I feel, I'd like a turn. I need something. You're saying, I, you're pointing to yourself and your lungs push the air through your voice box, your voice box makes a sound, ah, and then your lips and mouth form the words. So your personal power comes from within, you say I, you point to yourself, and out it comes. I feel, I feel stressed, I feel confused, I'd like a turn, I need a break. Right? If a child only goes to a teacher or you and says, I feel confused, or I'm confused, instantly that opens up your caregiving, your ability to support them and problem solve. But if they're running around screaming or if they're just stomping and getting stressed, A, you don't know what they need, right? You can't begin to problem solve. Um, and B, now they're, on, they're starting to 
take steps down the emotional GPS. They're getting into yellow and orange. So healthy, effective assertiveness gets out feelings, has children feel deeply heard and understood, and begins support and problem solving. So there's a million great things about coaching this and overcoaching this. So your use your power of I is a prompt that you can use to a child. Um, your child's starting to get upset. Oh, you look frustrated. Come on, quickly, uh, power of I. I feel, you can even tease it. You can start, start the sentence and then leave the blank. You can say, I feel dot, dot, dot. You can say to your child, you know, I like, what do you need? I need, let them finish the sentence. And if they can finish the sentence, that's a success. You go, oh, you need a hug. You're so stressed out. Okay, boom, here's your hug, you know, here's what you need. By contrast, the bottom part shows ineffective assertiveness. This would be, aggressiveness usually it's also blame and nobody really wants to help you if you you if you use the boo of you so again the boo of you is kind of cartoony if we're teaching it to young kids to make it very concrete the boo of you means you're pointing out if it's the power of i remember you're pointing to yourself i feel the boo of you means you're pointing out at other people which a puts them on the defensive b um assesses blame right? Takes no responsibility. So you always do this. You never do that. You beep, right? You insert insult there, right? You always, you never, you beep. Put the other person on the defensive. Nobody knows what you want or need, right? And they're less likely to want to help you. Now they're thinking in terms of consequences. You're disrespectful, right? Negative cycles. So we show the kids with this compare and contrast, uh, Please, you know, your power of I is so much more effective. And then again, as with everything, you can turn that into something that you, you give targeted praise to. Great job, great power of I. You stuck up for yourself beautifully, great job. And then you can even power it up more if you're using a reward system. 